The basics, become initiated. This segment will go over the basics of the butterfly life cycle. It's really important that we understand butterflies and how they multiply. We need to understand what plants are attractive to them. And that's more complicated than people generally think it is. So for starters, all butterflies on the face of the planet Earth have the same life cycle. What I mean by that is they go through the same four stages. However, they start differing when it comes to the time it takes them to go through their life cycle and the details of it. So different butterflies use different plants. Insect development is contingent on ambient temperatures. You can mathematically plot how fast it's going to take an insect to develop if you know the temperatures where it's developing. So the interesting thing is, I can be raising monarch butterflies in South Florida, and you might be raising monarch butterflies in Minnesota. And we can be raising them at the exact same time, let's say sometime in the middle of the summer, but where I am in Florida, at nighttime, for instance, the evening temperatures might be warmer than yours in Minnesota. And so since my day-to-day -day temperatures are warmer, even if we're raising monarchs that came from the exact same eggs, mine are going to develop faster than yours because your cooler temperatures will slow down their development. Now, some butterflies pause their development in cooler months in temperate climates. Each type of butterfly, each species, has a temperature that it requires a minimum for it to develop. If the temperature gets cooler than that, development stops. And in some places, for instance, over winter, they might pause their development throughout the entire winter and not pick it up again until spring or until the temperatures get warm enough. So what that means is if you're in a warmer climate, like where my garden is in South Florida, we really don't ever get cold enough for development to completely stop. It certainly slows down in January and February where our evening temperatures might dip into the 50s on a cold night, but pretty much they continue to develop year round. Now compare that to Oregon, where I spend my summers. In Oregon, butterflies are basically in a state of diapause, which is kind of like a pausing of development through the winter months. So in the summertime in Oregon, that's when they develop, but during the cooler months, they slow down development. Regardless of where they are, every single butterfly starts out as an egg. Mama butterfly has eggs in her abdomen that have been fertilized by a male butterfly, assuming that she's already mated, and her next job is to find a place to lay those eggs. Now, eggs are teeny tiny. Look how tiny this little egg is. It's the egg of a clouded sulfur butterfly, and it's on a clover plant. In time, as temperature allows, and humidity, and a few other factors, Caterpillars will come out of those eggs. Caterpillars are baby butterflies. Caterpillars are the juvenile stage of the insect. All caterpillars are babies. Babies don't really have a job other than to eat, poop, and grow. That's pretty much all babies do, and that's also all baby caterpillars do. They are only eating that plant that their mother put them on. That's the food source that they need to survive. And every species of butterfly on Earth has a very limited amount of plants that it can eat as a caterpillar. Some of them only have one kind, or at the very least, plants of one kind of family. After that caterpillar has eaten enough leaves of its one plant that its mom put it on, which we call a host plant, then its body will start changing internally and it will be prompted to form a chrysalis. The chrysalis is the third stage of the butterfly life cycle. And because it's not quite an adult yet, the chrysalis is still considered one of the juvenile stages. So, so far we've had three juvenile stages, an egg, a caterpillar, and a chrysalis. Now the chrysalis form is very dangerous because they can't change their location as a chrysalis. And many butterflies overwinter as a chrysalis. Predators like birds and other animals would love to eat a butterfly chrysalis. So it's a little bit dangerous in this stage. Every species of butterfly makes its own unique type of chrysalis. People who are butterfly experts can identify what kind of butterfly is going to come out of it because the chrysalids are all unique. Eventually, an adult butterfly comes out of the chrysalis. We know they're adults when they have wings. All butterflies have four wings. They have two on the top and two on the bottom. 
Small butterflies, like the one in the picture, are just genetically small butterflies. Think of them like chihuahuas. But there are large butterflies and there are medium butterflies. The size of the butterfly has more to do with the species than anything else, though if they didn't have enough nutrition when they were a caterpillar, they might form a little bit smaller than normal, but generally speaking, size is determined by species. They don't grow anymore once they're adults with wings. The wings they come out of the chrysalis with are the wings they're gonna have for their whole life. And they're not a baby anymore. Once they have wings, they're a full-blown adult. And that means they are now either male or female. When they were caterpillars, they had internally programmed male or female genes, but those didn't manifest until they get to the adult stage. Now that it's an adult butterfly, if it's a female, she's got to find a male and she's got to start laying her eggs on her one and only host plant. Okay, let's do a quick recap of the butterfly life cycle. All butterflies start out as an egg. A science word you can use for this is ovum. Out of the egg comes a caterpillar, or the science word is a larva. Eventually, the larva will form a pupa. And when we are talking about butterflies, we specifically call that pupa a chrysalis. Finally, we have the butterfly, which is the adult stage of the insect. Mama butterfly can only lay her egg on one kind of plant. She finds that plant by amazing sensory skills she has inherently built into her instincts. And what she's looking for as a butterfly is those special plants that she needs. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching.